Hi, welcome to Excel Works video tutorials. In this video, we'll demonstrate the use of the worksheet function PD solve in the Excel Lab Add-in Library to solve partial differential equations in Excel. The example used today is Berger's equation shown here for the following configuration. Let me first begin by describing PD solve. PD solve solves a system of partial differential equations up to second order and spatial derivatives. It takes six required parameters. The first parameter is a reference to the formulas, right-hand formulas for the system, the variables for the system. Note here that in contrast to ordinary differential equation solvers, here we have u, its first and second derivatives as variables, and as such we must assign variables for the three of them. We also need to assign an initial condition for uh, each equation, and that's defined in the variable u. We need to also supply the left and right bounding conditions for each equation whenever applicable. Not every equation will require two bounding conditions. This depends on the order of the equation, which is the order of the highest derivative. The fifth and sixth parameters define the domains for the equation, the spatial domain and the time domain. They also allow you to customize the output, similar to the, pat the, the format used for the initial value problem solver as well as the body value problem solver. This is all described in detail in the help page. There are also several optional parameters. They allow you to pass the Jacobians, specify tolerances, as well as specify a set of key value pairs to control algorithm selection and fine tune the settings for the algorithm. There are some useful parameters that you will probably use more often, which include describing the format of the of the solution layout as you see here we have two variables two independent variables for a partial differential equation system which is time and space so there are multiple ways you can lay out the solution let me in fact explain the layout before we go to excel so it becomes clearer one layout is called the xcall1 format and this layout basically divides up the range for the spatial variable according to a located number of rows. And then divides up the time variable according to the allocated number of columns. The advantage of this format is you can easily snapshot view of the any of the variables at selected points in time. The other format, which is called the T call one format, flips the role of the time and space. The time is now listed in the first column, whereas the space is listed in the first row. And the advantage of this format is allows us to do a easy transient view of the variables at selected spatial points, as we will see in the example. Let me move now to Excel, as some of this will become clearer. So I'm showing the problem we're solving here. The first thing I need to do is select my variables for a problem. And I usually like to name my variables as U, UX and UXX, that will simplify refer referencing these variables in the formula. I've selected U1, U to correspond to U, and I've named it as U. U2 to correspond to uh, the first derivative of U, and I've named it UX. And U3 to correspond to the second derivative of U, and I've named it as UXX. I've also assigned my initial condition in U, which corresponds to the given initial condition formula here uxt at time equals 0 is equal to cosine 2 pi x and as you can see I've defined in u1 the formula cosine 2 pi x1 where x1 and t1 are my free variables for the system having defined these variables I can easily now write my right hand side formula for the for the equation which corresponds to the given equation here it's the new point zero 0.01 which is the value of u times uxx minus u times ux. Next I need to define the left and right body conditions for the equation and again they correspond to the given equations here. My left body condition is ux and I have to define the equation with respect to 0 on one side so I move this term to the left hand side so it becomes ux minus t1 times exponential cosine t1. Likewise for the right body condition it's simply u minus 1. This is really all required to set up the problem for the solver. The next step is to allocate an array sufficient to hold the solution. And I'm going to request four divisions for the time period, 
therefore I will need six column for my array one column for the independent variable X and four columns for the uh, time points since I only have one variable in this equation so I've already allocated this array the number of rows I allocate is somewhat arbitrary for the default settings and simply it takes the solver simply takes the spatial domain 0 to 1 and divide it up in the allocated number of rows between 0 and 1 I entered my PD solve formula here my first argument is a reference to the right hand side formula in B7 the second argument is the reference to the system variable starting with T1, X1 and then U, UX and UXX then followed by the left body condition the right body condition definition for the spatial domain 0 to 1 and definition for the time domain 0 to 1 and I'm here re requesting four subdivisions this format is explained in detail in the help page and it's similar to the ordinary differential solvers now to run the solver I simply press ctrl shift enter and it computes a fraction of a second now to plot this solution all I have to do is highlight the obtained solution and as you can see I, I get a quick plot which I've already done here now as we discussed before the default behavior of the solver is to give you a snapshot view of the solution meaning that we can easily plot the spatial distribution of the variables for selected time points which shown in the figure here so we can see how the system spatially evolve in time starting at time equal 0 and then at time equal for example 0.25 and so forth till we go to the final solution at time equal uh, 1 now the second format available for us is the uh, transient format and I've already s solved it in a second set of array as you can see here I've al allocated a similar memory it's the same information that's in the first format except the layout is different and we control this with the key format that's also described in the key value pairs in the help page so I'm requesting here the key call format which rearranges this, the solver let me just run it again here and again it runs in a fraction of a second and as you can see here now my time variables is listed in the first column but my spatial variable is listed in the first row so now uh, I can easily plot transient views of any of these variables at selected spatial points for example uh, this column here gives me the solution at uh, the point x equals 0 this column here gives me the solution the transient solution at x equal 0.25 and so forth I've already made a plot for the solution as you can see here this is the transient behavior of the system variable at different spatial points PD solve is a very powerful solver there are multiple algorithms you can select from as well as customize and it can handle a system of partial differential equations with multiple variables there are examples in the help page that you can reference for uh, different problems the heat equation the wave equation and the problem we just solved and there are also a lot more details in the help page that you can read through for additional information this concludes this tutorial thank you for watching you can always reference the webpage excel-works.com for additional information